Good evening, everyone. This is Mike, Gray 1951, drinking again. When am I not drinking? And I'm here to uh, do a video for the celebration of Noir Vember. Uh, did I say that right? Noir Vember. I uh, just found out about this yesterday from my friend Forkerball. There's a Facebook page that is called Noir Vember, and everybody is supposed to, well, I guess their suggestion is that everybody is supposed to watch. Uh, film noir every day in November. Well, so Forkerball suggested that um, we just do one a week so we won't wear ourselves out. That's a good idea. So so this is my first one. And I decided to pick one that I've watched many, many times. I watched it again tonight. And uh, it's in this, this wonderful volume four of the Warner Home Video Film Noir Classic Collection. Uh, there are five of these. And if you don't have them, why don't you have them? You really should. What's wrong with you? Um, so why don't we just pause the video right now, put the video on pause, go to moviesunlimited.com, or if you insist, go to Amazon, go somewhere, and buy all of these. And I will sit here and wait for you. I'll drink while you're doing it. Okay, you're finished? Okay, good. We're back. All right. So the film I chose out of the set is on this little double feature here. It's called Tension. Tension. The other film is called Where Danger Lives. That's a good one, too. Tension is an MGM film released in 1950. Very, very good movie. It's been one of my favorites for a long time, before I even knew what film noir was. And uh, it's uh, in gorgeous black and white cinematography. It has music by Andre Previn. And I'm mentioning that because I found out from the, uh, the commentary that it was the first film score that Andre Previn ever did. So that's kind of cool to know. Film stars uh, Richard Basehart, Audrey Totter, Sid Charisse, Barry Sullivan, and William Conrad. Now, the film opens up with Barry Sullivan, who plays a police detective. And he's, he's standing there in the character that he's playing. And he starts to talk about um, people who commit crimes and they, they try to hide what they're doing until they reach the breaking point. And they're so filled with tension that they finally break, right? And he's, he's holding this rubber band in his hands and he's stretching it. And the camera slowly pans down to the rubber band, just stretching, stretching to the breaking point. And then finally it snaps. And the word tension comes flying at you right in your face. And that's when the credits start rolling. I always thought that was a great beginning. Okay, so tension. Ah, it's filled with tension. I'm tense right now just talking about it. Anyway, uh, did I say it was released in 1950? I don't know if I did or not, but yeah, it came out in 1950. And um, Richard Basehart plays a guy named Warren Quimby, who is a night manager of a drugstore. And he's married to a woman named Claire, played by Audrey Totter, who is the classic femme fatale. They've been married for a few years, and their marriage is going bad. She's not happy. She's totally dissatisfied with him. Her life everything she wants money she wants men in fact she wants every man that walks past her she's the kind of woman who will come into her husband's place um, and sit at the counter and drink coffee and have a piece of pie and let men pick her up while her husband's working back there in the pharmacy right she's not she's not even trying to hide the fact that she's a total slut and he just worships her he would do anything for this woman which is why he's working at night 12 hours every night so that he can Keep saving money. He wants to buy a house for them so that they can uh, go live in the suburbs and start a family, which is the last thing in the world that she wants. So this goes on, and she finally finds the right guy with the right amount of money, and she packs her clothes and leaves. Of course, Warren begs her, don't go, I love you. And she said, no, it's over. You used to be a lot of laughs when you were a soldier, <clears throat> but now that you've taken your uniform off, you're no longer funny. <clears throat> so she walks out. And goes to live with this rich guy, this rich, tough guy, played by Lloyd Goff. Uh, his name is Dagger, uh, at the beach. So Warren goes to the beach house to try to talk her into coming back. And, of course, she says no. And the boyfriend, Dagger, beats him up in front of his wife. Beats him up, humiliates him, which only adds to his tension. And <clears throat> in the process <coughs> of the fight, Quimby's glasses are broken, right? So he has to go to the uh, eye doctor to get his glasses fixed. And while he's there, the doctor suggests that he take a look at some of the new um, contact lenses. He said it'll completely change your look, right? 
And at first Quimby says, no, nah, I'm not interested. Then after a while he starts to think about what he what he can do to find a way to kill the boyfriend because he is so angry. He is so humiliated and hurt and angry. He wants his wife back. He wants to get back at this guy who embarrassed him in front of his wife. And he decides that he wants to create a whole new identity for himself, starting with getting rid of the glasses. So he does that, gives himself a new name, calls himself Paul Southern. He uh, gets the name Southern because he sees a picture of actress Ann Southern on the cover of a magazine, which is kind of cool. Another MGM contract player, by the way. And uh, he, he gives a whole new look, starts just starts to look different in his face. Not even not, It's not just that he no longer has the glasses, but he just really just starts to look dapper. You know, put, puts a fedora on his head and even goes out and finds a, another apartment. He's posing as a traveling salesman. What he's trying to do is to establish a new address, a new identity, and have people see him in that persona so that he can establish an alibi where, where it will be Paul Southern who commits the murder, and then Paul Southern will disappear. So every night he goes back to his job as Warren Quimby in the drugstore, right? And all this time he's planning for the right, the right moment when he can go to the beach house and kill Dagger, the boyfriend. And when he moves into the apartment complex, he meets a young woman uh, named Mary Chandler, played by Sid Charisse, another MGM contract player. And uh, in, in her dramatic role, Sid Charisse, of course, would later on become one of the most famous dancing stars that MGM ever had. But she, would, she was also occasionally doing a, just a pure dramatic role. And so they are immediately attracted to each other. And he, he starts to uh, take her out. Of course, he can't completely commit to her. He's torn between wanting to get revenge, get his wife back, and also his new feelings about Mary. So he finally gets to the right point where he's going to kill Dagger, right? So he's he's out of the beach house at night. He's just about to stab the guy with a, with a barbecue fork, and he can't do it. He stops. All of a sudden, he realizes he doesn't he doesn't truly want to kill this guy. It's not worth it. His wife is not worth it. And he wants the new life that he could have as Paul Southern with Mary. So he tells he tells Dagger, you can have her. She's not worth it. She's yours now. And he walks out. Well, guess what? Dagger ends up dead anyway. And Paul is Paul, aka Warren, is the prime suspect. So that starts this whole mysterious, uh, convoluted mess that all these people get involved in. And uh, it's up to Barry Sullivan, the detective, with his uh, hapless assistant, played by William Conrad, a very young William Conrad, to, to sort all this out. And Barry Sullivan is suspicious of everybody, and he's trying to increase all the tension to make somebody break so that he can find the clues that will solve the mystery. And he's very manipulative with everybody and uh, plays each one of the characters against each other. It's very, very cool. Very well written, well acted by everybody. Audrey Totter was a great actress. She never became a top star um, in her career, but she did a lot of films. She was a lot like um, Gloria Graham, who was starting out about the same time. They kind of resembled each other, although I think Audrey Totter was a much more attractive woman and really the better actress. But uh, she, she is the classy femme fatale. And I don't know. It, it's a it's a very good movie. Uh, all I can say is that I highly recommend it. Tension. Not that I want you to feel tension, but I want you to watch it. Okay. It's directed by a guy named John Barry, who is not not a terribly familiar name, even even to me. And I had to look him up. It, it said on the commentary that John Barry had started out as an actor with the uh, Orson Welles troupe of actors in New York City. And when, when Orson Welles came to Hollywood, John Barry came as well and eventually started working as a director. And unfortunately, in the early 1950s, he was blacklisted during that, that terrible uh, McCarthy era. Uh, he was named as a communist. I don't know if he really was or not, but he was named as a communist by another director named uh, Edward Dimitri. And uh, Dimitri's career, because he named a name, his career went on. Uh, John Barry was blacklisted and eventually about the, the year after he, he went to France and he started working there and eventually came back to the United States and, and worked and uh, made several films, did some television as well. But 
It's a good movie. So that is my first film noir, maybe one that a lot of you have not heard of. Tension, okay, 1950. So let me know if you've seen it. I would like to find out, okay? Good night.